how did pine and sequoia logs from the mountain highlands or maple, buckeye, and hickory trees that grew in the lower foothills end up tangled with swamp-loving trees that grew on the plain below? Beck and his colleagues believed that these trees, found stripped of their bark and branches, had fallen of old age and winter storms up in the higher hills, then floated downstream in rivers. Eventually, thousands of battered logs were piled in a lake near present-day Vantage when lava began to flow. But there may be another explanation. In the 1980s, geologists discovered bits of volcanic pumice in the layer of sediment lying beneath the petrified logs. Perhaps the explosive eruption of a Cascade Mountain volcano set off a massive mudslide, a mixture of melted snow, mud, and ash that thundered down the mountainside, bulldozing everything in its path. Trees from every altitude were tossed and tumbled together. Swept downhill by the mud flow into the Great Columbia River, they rushed down the river channel until something stood in the way. Something like Sentinel Gap. A plug of mud, ash, logs, and debris may have blocked this natural bottleneck just to the south of Vantage. Or maybe a lava flow on the far side dammed up the gap instead. The mighty Columbia River, unable to find a way through, backed up into a spreading lake brimming with fallen logs. Which of these explanations comes closest to what really happened? Or will different theories develop as more clues to the mystery are found? All we can say for certain is that scores of different kinds of trees, some from far distant mountains, were lying in water near a vantage when lava poured over the plain. Even as lava flows surged across central Washington, other geological forces were changing and shaping the earth. The flat plateau warped and folded into high ridges and valleys, then tilted southward as rising mountains lifted the land to the north. Sloping surfaces speeded up natural erosion. Weather, wind, and water scoured away at the surface, slowly wearing it down toward the layer of petrified logs underneath. The Cascade Mountains rose higher, forming a solid barrier between the ocean and the plateau. Clouds that had once sailed inland were now caught and held by the mountains. Green inland forests, deprived of rain, turned into harsh, treeless desert. And then, some two million years ago, the weather began to turn cold. A vast sheet of ice crept down across Canada into northern Washington as the earth shivered through its most recent ice age. Near the end of this period, about 15,000 years ago, a massive lake fed by melting glaciers broke through its dam of ice, unleashing a devastating flood of staggering force and speed. Over the next few thousand years, it happened again and again. These powerful floods blasted trench-like channels right through the basalt plateau exposing layer upon layer of the past in coolies and steep canyon walls. By the time the floods were finished, petrified wood from the Miocene age lay very near the surface. At least 6,000 years ago, humans in central Washington were fashioning blades and weapon points from stone that was glossy and hard as flint, but looked like the wood of a tree. When Professor Beck and his students unearthed the petrified forest, they were actually hunting for one specific type of petrified wood. Fossil leaf prints of the ginkgo tree had been found in nearby Grand Coulee, but the fossilized wood of the ginkgo had never been found by anyone anywhere in the world. The stately ginkgo, with leaves like fluttering paper fans, is one of the oldest, most primitive trees still growing on the earth. 200 million years ago, during the time of the dinosaurs, ginkgo trees flourished in temperate regions all around the globe. But the ginkgo, 
came close to extinction during the frigid ice age. It survived the cold only in Asia, where it was cultivated for medicine and revered as a sacred tree. Beck and his students had spent three years searching for petrified ginkgo. In three days at Vantage, they found it. The first known fragment of petrified wood from the primeval ginkgo tree. Even now, there are only a handful of places where fossilized ginkgo wood has been found. Among the 150 trees extensively studied at Vantage, only three or four logs are ginkgo. But these fossils were so significant that the site was later officially named Ginkgo Petrified Forest. News of the ancient stone forest provided a welcome distraction from the gloom of the Great Depression. The Ellensburg Chamber of Commerce quickly printed a glossy brochure aimed at attracting tourists to the world's leading petrified forest. In the spring of 1934, when new state highway improvements threatened to cut through the best of the logs, friends of the forest traveled to the capital in Olympia and convinced Governor Clarence Martin to relocate the road project a quarter mile to the south. A steady procession of sightseers filing Sunday along the trail in the petrified forest were an indication of the tremendous play the area seems destined to receive from the motoring public. Professor George F. Beck of the State School at Ellensburg conducted the visitors over the ground, telling over and over again the story of the forest as it is recorded in stone. The Wenatchee Daily World, March 22, 1934. In the following year, the Washington legislature created Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park. By October 1935, 58,000 visitors had made their way to the desert to see the petrified trees. 